Okay, so when we had just left off, we had just completed creating the sort of sample data version of our sales volume page. So what I'd like to do now is to create our latest orders page, which will consist of a table of orders from our system. Again, we'll start with some sample data, and then once we get our API built, we'll look at how to actually feed actual data from our database into this component. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to make a commit from our last session. Created our sample data version of line chart. And so let's go ahead and head back into the code now. So I'm going to close out some of the open tabs that we had here and minimize our section sales. And now we'll open up our section orders. And if we take a look at the template, as usual, we have this boilerplate code that we can just go ahead and remove. We'll go ahead and create a div that will contain our uh, table, and this will be a section container class div. And at the top of the page, just in a heading tag, uh, maybe heading two, we'll just say latest orders. And then the way that this is going to work is we're going to create a table and style it using bootstrap. So we'll have a table of class table, table inverse, table hover. Each of these are table classes provided by bootstrap that will give our table a little bit uh, more of a clean look. And we'll have a table heading. And this uh, T head class of T head dark will be a custom class that we'll write. So then we have a table row with some table headings. So our orders will consist of IDs, customers, and then some particular amount for the order. And then we'll show when, when an order was placed, when an order was fulfilled, and then we'll have a column for order status as well. Okay, now within the body of our table, or T body here, we want to have rows for each of the orders that are in our system. And so this is a really good example of a place where we can use an ng4 directive. So all we have to do is say star ng4. And the syntax for this will be let order of orders. And then for each of those orders in the system, we'll have some uh, value for each of the columns here. So orders will be a property that's on our section orders component. Again, at first, that'll be some sample data that we hard code later to be provided by our API. And this order of orders will be the object that we have access to here in our sort of ng4 loop, if you will. And so we can just simply use interpolation in our template here to grab the various properties off of each individual order. So we're going to have a property on our order object corresponding to each of the properties that are defined in our heading here. So an order will have an ID, customer, amount, um, two dates, one for when it was placed and one for when it was fulfilled, and then the order status. So what I'm going to do is simply say order and then call each of these properties. And the customer object will be nested, so we'll have a customer.name here. Maybe order amount, we'll just call order.total. And then order status we'll set up here in a little bit. We're going to use uh, an ngif directive here to actually display um, a tag depending on whether or not the order was finished. So let's just go ahead and put a placeholder here for the order status. We're also going to be adding pagination to this page so that when we have um, a large number of orders or at least enough orders where we want to um, paginate, we'll have a completely separate component actually dedicated to handling that. For now, let's go take a look at our page. We obviously don't have an order object yet or an orders 
um, array of objects to iterate through, but we should see some of the other elements on the page. So we'll click latest orders. And so you can see that we have our table started here. And so let's go ahead and create our orders type and then create some mock data that we can actually show in the table for the time being. So I'm going to head over into our section orders.component.ts. And again, I'll move our template off to the right side here. And so what we want to do is create this orders property that we can then iterate through. So just below our constructor, which again, for the time being, will remain empty. I have this orders property and we'll say that this needs to be an array of orders. And so obviously we'll need to define this type as well. So let's go ahead and open up the file explorer here. And then under shared, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and we're going to call it order.ts. You could also keep this in say like a models directory. We'll have models for a few other types in our system. So, um, but in the shared directory is fine too. What I'm going to do is export an interface order. So as I've mentioned before, the interface here um, is really, once again, um, just like lots of TypeScript, really for the purposes of our uh, convenience while developing. So this is going to allow the linter to give us a warning if we haven't set the property on um, you know, some property of the order that we define when we're implementing it. Otherwise, we could just as uh, simply also make this a class. We just wouldn't get the benefits uh, from the linting if we, for some reason, forget to implement uh, or set one of the properties on the order. So we'll have an ID, which will be a type of number. The customer. So for customer, we're going to make a new type customer as well. And the total will be a number. Placed will be a date and fulfilled will also be a date. So we need to go ahead and create this customer type. And in advance of doing that, what I'm going to go ahead and do is import the type customer from uh, the current directory, and then we'll create a customer.ts file. So in the shared directory, new file, customer.ts. And here we'll just simply export the interface customer. Customers will say we'll have an ID, a name, an email, and a state. Uh, you can make the customer object more complex by making, uh, by providing like a full address here. I'm just keeping things simple by providing the customer with a state so that we can later have a graph where we look at orders by state um, in which we'll actually just query on customers um, belonging to each state and then group those orders. But of course, if this were a real customer in your system, you would probably have many more properties than this anyway. Again, this just kind of being um, for a demo of getting our application started. So let's head now back into order. You can see that our import from the customer should be working. And this reference to the customer type is now valid. So if we head back now into our section orders component .typescript file, we can actually import this order type now. So we'll import order from back a couple directories in our shared directory slash order. And let's go ahead and create a sample order array. So I'm just going to go ahead and create, say, five orders where we'll have an ID. a customer, which in turn will be this complex object that has an ID, a name, a state. And if we take a look back at the customer, um, let's we'll see the other one in email. And then we had an order total placed. Fulfilled.
and then status, which maybe we'll just say completed. Okay, so that's a lot of data, um, and the linter is going to be upset here that um, we're exceeding our line lengths. So in fact, what I might do is just go ahead and have a single order here. I'll clean it up, and then we'll copy it again. So I'm just going to put each of the properties here on a separate line, um, or at least a few lines here, just kind of clean it up. And then I'll copy this, and then I'll paste it four times. We still have our five orders. And then I'll just um, iterate the order numbers here. So we have five orders with IDs one, two, three, four, and five. And I'll just keep all the other properties the same for now. If you wanted to move this out, um, sort of like we did with some of the data in our charts, to a separate file, just just for the purposes of having this mock data, then you might uh, consider doing that as well. In any case, what this does is it provides us with this orders property, and we set it to this specific array of orders. Okay, so if we take a look at our page now, we can see that we're getting our data out to our table, which is good. So our ng4 loop is iterating through uh, this loop of orders, and we can see them here. Now, you probably won't want to display the dates sort of in these standard uh, timestamp formats. So we can actually uh, control the way that these dates are displayed using some built-in Angular pipes. So let's go take a look at that now. So we'll minimize this and we'll head over uh, back into the template. So our section orders component.html file. And we can use what are called date pipes here both on the placed and fulfilled columns. So simply provide a pipe here, and then the syntax will be date, which will be the type of pipe that we have. And then let's go ahead and make these short. So now if we take a look back at the page, we can see that we get a much nicer sort of short uh, format to each of these dates. Now the way that I specify the dates in the mock data um, was just by creating a, a new JavaScript date and then passing in the year, the month, and the date. And so this created a new instance of a, a date object. This of course uh, just created the sort of the midnight value, if you will, for um, each of these dates. When we get data back from our API, it will also include the time. And so um, by using this short date pipe, um, we'll also be able to see the time in a more humanized format. If you take a quick look at the docs for the Angular date pipe, you'll see that there are a number of different out of the box formats um, that the pipe provides for us. So if you have a particular preference for your application, you can either construct a sort of custom format or you can use one of the, the many different types of out of the box formats that they have. Okay, so when we get to the point where we're actually reading real data, we'll have hundreds or thousands of results here, and so obviously we'll need to develop some sort of pagination mechanism for that. So we'll look at that in a future video. In the next video, we'll create the mock data version of our final page here, the system health page, and we'll go ahead and get that template set up.